Excuse me. It may sound comfortable in your chair to start off with. Then have your feet down. And if you can be slightly forward in, in your chair, then without straining your back or shoulders, tilt forward slightly for the weight in your feet. But just try and bring your attention into your body, sort of gather in your thoughts. And I'm not going to use the word concentrate for this because I think that's too too rigid, too hard to turn some of it. Just drawing yourself together in, in, in mind and body. Noticing aspects of your posture, maybe noticing your breathing, maybe noticing those areas that feel a little bit tight. It's just whatever, whatever begins to anchor your thoughts more effectively in your body in the first instance is useful. And then rubbing your hands together. And tapping over your face. A light, rapid movement with the pads of your fingers. Working up over your head with the palms of your hands. Or, or your fingers, if that's still better for you. Working over from the forehead to your neck. down to one shoulder and then your arm the other side and the upper part of your chest down just very light on your belly and finally your next this too is not a purely physical thing, and nothing in Tai Chi really is. As you do this, it draws your attention to those parts of your body that you're tapping. Now, change your side, sit back in your chair, have your feet out, and just have a, an idea of your weight dropping into the chair. So those of you who have done this before, whether you're live or watching, on YouTube, we'll have an idea about the feelings, the qualities that you're looking for in the postures and the movements. And that can be a very direct way of leading your body into them. If that doesn't work, because it doesn't always happen that immediately, that's when we might bring in the various ideas about posture, the various images that we use, and so on. But just don't those times when there's an immediacy, when there doesn't seem to be this need for an intermediary between what we think of as body, what we think of as mind. And a key focus of attention here would be your weight dropping into the chair, just allowing gravity to draw you in to the chair without resistance. <clears throat> Can we start the session by going through various aspects of, of, of Tai Chi, with the posture to do with awareness, and movement and so on and so forth. But the ultimate aim would be for all these things to be present as much as possible. So, you know, we, it's good to work on the individual aspects of it. And sometimes we identify particular aspects that we want to work on. But ultimately, it's, it, it's the whole that we're looking for. So by working on the individual aspects, we improve our ability at them. And they just naturally begin to, 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 to blend and merge with each other. So rooting down, allowing gravity to work through your body without resistance, with the support of the chair in this posture. 
but if we change the posture coming back to the upright position, and again, if you can be bored, that's great, but if you find that's causing a strain on your back, do, do sit back, give extra support to your spine, but still try and be a little bit tilted forwards. Looking for a posture that allows that same ability to release, to allow gravity to work down through our body. So the positioning of your body is, your upper body is, is important. Beginning to feel that your legs, feet are offering some support. Of course, the you know, chair, therefore hips, buttocks, lower back are also supporting your weight. that your back supports the front of your upper body so try not to put your belly in tighten in your chest and finally a little bit more subtly feeling that in your upper body the spine your rib cage offers support and shape you don't need that tension in your shoulders to hold the shape and eventually that's something we want to feel through the whole of the skeleton that the support and the strength comes from within. You could imagine your skeleton is, and the surrounding area as being like a tailor's dummy or a mannequin in the shop window with a, a garment arranged around it. The garment itself is quite soft and the, the, the shape comes from the the, the Mannequin. So we begin to lose some of the tightness in the muscles like the, um, the deltoid and the trapezius and the shoulders and so on. And as we do that, we find uh, more subtle areas of the body, like the skeleton, as I was just explaining, start to engage in them. So we get more of a sense of our, of our whole body as one unit rather than separate parts. And with that in mind, just gently turning your head from side to side. So one of the things that we could be said to be trying to do with all the different movements is to, 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 to cultivate this sense of being supported, and the, the sort of softer quality, the more connected quality in, in body and mind that goes with that. And that leads us to the feel of the movement. And the qualities of spaciousness and flow, the energy moving, steady rhythmic movement. And then hands in front of your shoulders. And those various qualities make a big contribution, I think, to our sense of well-being and how we feel about ourselves. And then going forwards. And then take your hands out, put them down to the sides, slightly out, and just rotate in your arms. As you go through these movements, you'll slowly become aware, hopefully, of how when we do a movement like this, which is predominantly, of course, in, in our arms, we start to feel movements elsewhere, maybe in our chest, our sides, our upper back. And then winding around.
and back the other way. And then rest your hands. Now, <coughs> just ease forwards a little. And push back. It's almost like being in a rocking chair. You're pivoting on the bones at the base of the pelvis. Move your weight going into your legs. And like in a rocking chair, come back to the upright. You push gently down in, into the ground. So we're beginning to initiate movement from the lower part of our body. This helps us to maintain the rooted quality, that feeling of our center of gravity dropping, helps us to maintain stability in movement. We have this very dynamic quality of our weight moving from feet to hips, which moves the upper part of our body. Again, try not to stiffen up in your back or your shoulders. Just have a sense of Let's say, for instance, just your, your spine, just focusing on that for the moment, think of it as being almost like a plant in water, floating forwards and backwards. A certain amount of support from the surrounding environment, but not a strong resistance to the movement. And once your spine begins to move, then of course the rest of your body is going to begin to resonate to that movement. Now, turn in the centre of your body a little bit and you'll find that more of your weight goes into one leg. And as with the reclining posture, we don't want to resist feeling the weight going into the leg. In fact, if anything, ideally, what we feel is as we go forwards, our weight drops down into our foot and then we feel the leg filling up. But just notice whether maybe you're tightening your thighs or your knees. Resisting. That's very common for that to happen. It's quite difficult to overcome. Turn, try this on the other side. And particularly, you know, if you've had some trouble with the knee or something like that, you may find that you're sort of protecting that, that area. It's good to practice this process in the chair because we also use it in the standing movements. And if we can start to get a sense for how this works in the chair, it's a slightly more controlled in, in environment. So if you do have that issue with the knee, for instance, you, know, you, you, you can work out how to, to, to do this, this, this movement without straining the knee. And then go forwards and turn slightly. So you go across into the other leg, push back into the hip behind that leg, turn across into your other hip and forwards again. So your weight moving sort of energizes in a sense the upper part of your body. And you end up with your shoulders and your head going round in the circle. But again, we're initiating movement from the lower part of the body not from head and shoulders, which is often what we actually do. And then back the other way. And then sit out with one leg. Plant in the foot. So try and get the whole foot down. Don't lock your knee out. 
and see if you can just apply a gentle pressure that, so you were just very gently trying to push your foot into the ground. Again, another thing that we try and repeat when we're standing. And then on the other side, be patient with things like this. It's a, it's a very tricky thing to do smoothly. So you, know, you don't have to do it every time. Just, just every now and then when we do do the stepping in the, the, the chair, and eventually you'll, you, you'll be able to do it more consistently. Okay, so now just coming back to this basic sitting position, ideally about a third of your weight in your feet. Let your hands drop down and again, this rotating movement and tilt forward, so more of your weight going forward as you rotate your arms. This is bird folds its weight. So now we start to create movements where that blending process of the different elements, the root, transfer of the weight, the feeling of support, spaciousness within the body, and whatever else you've sort of picked up on, really start to, to slowly come together and to blend. I sometimes draw an analogy with cooking where you prepare all the ingredients and then everything goes into the pan or the pot and over a period of time the different flavours and textures sort of merge a little bit. So this is bird folds its wings. And then palms facing back this time, fisherman cast the neck. Weight moves forward, shoulders follow the weight, your arms follow the shoulders. And the same going back. Wave like flow of movement through your body. Try not to stiffen up in your shoulders. Be aware of the weight of your arms hanging from your shoulders. Spread your fingers out a little bit. Notice if you're holding your fingers or your thumb tight. Thumb loosen. In a sense, one of the images that we use is that we move through water. Your arms are moving already through a very gentle curve. And this time go forward, leave your arms out in front of your body, push down through your feet, and you feel your arms being drawn over. So you're rolling the ball in towards your chest. And the forwards push back. Don't strain in your shoulders. After a little while of this, you may feel a sort of almost wave-like quality of movement coming up underneath your arms.
as you go forward, there's a, a, a length and in through your back and spine that contracts as you come back. And that provides a connection between the movement of your weight and what's happening in your arms. And then this time, turn your hands in. Just open up the chest a little bit. It's as pigeon spreads its wings. Your arm being pushed out and then your arm back in. Again. And then hands in front of your hips, and as you come back, your elbows still go out a little bit, but not too far. And then press and forward. This is pushing way. The same qualities of extension and contraction in your back, the opening and closing of your chest, a little bit more subtle with this one, a little bit more focused, so a stronger feel to the movement, as the name might suggest. More time. And then this time, hands again in front of your hips, so your elbows, a loose fist in your hands. And as you go forwards, rotating in your arms. Don't just thrust your arms out. I'll just do this with one hand. And if I don't move my weight, I just move my arm, it goes that far. So my elbow doesn't completely straighten even then. Still a little bit of a bend there. It's really not, not, not very much movement. If I do nothing with my arm but move my weight, this is what happens. And if I combine the two, this is where I get the full length of the movement. Again, try not to grip tightly with your fingers because that will cause a tightening going back up into your shoulder and restrict the movement. And then open your fingers, turning your hands out, winding back. I mean, and same press forwards that we did earlier.
one more time. Coming back, turn your hands palm down. Turn your body a little bit to, to the left. Go forwards towards your left foot in that same sense of your arms extending gently. Turn to bring your weight back to the other foot and then back into the hip behind and back to the centre, arm drawing in. And then change direction. And we end up with this circular movement in our arms, expressing this movement of our weight, the movement in our pelvis, just polishing the table. So there's a number of things that go on before the movement reaches the arms, including, <coughs> including and importantly, including the movement of the weight, turning in the center of the body, various patterns of expansion and contraction through different pathways in our upper body. We start to get this sense of flow of energy moving us do one more in each direction And then turning your hands palm up and with a gentle push down through your hips and your feet, maybe a bit of lengthening in, in, in your back, feel that movement up and then pressing down. As though you're lifting the ball and pressing it down. But the exercise is called rooting down. So it's that downward movement through your hips and your feet, connects you to the ground that initiates the movement. Almost like you're sort of sinking down into the ground and bouncing back out. Turning your hands out so the fingers point away from your shoulders. Same thing in hips and feet. Your arms coming out to the sides. Well, this is the exercise for wild goose. The images are there to help draw qualities that we might recognize in the image into our body. They become part of our intention. If an image doesn't work for you, if it's not appropriate, then you really have to chase after it. Not all images will work for you. And then a slight movement forward to so let your hands pass in front of your knees and then back into your hips and the same sort of push up. We have parting plans.
One more time. And then letting your hands drop down, just feeling the weight of your arms and your shoulders. And with the next little bit of push down and expansion, focusing on one side, pushing your arm up, like you're going to pluck something very delicate off a tree and pull down. So this dragon plucks the stars from the sky. So once again, when you make this gesture with your hand, you sort of wrap your fingers around, don't grip tightly, and then feel the contraction down the other side of the room. And changing sides. And in contracting. This is a consistent rhythm to all of these movements. We feel it again, different patterns and different pathways through our body, particularly in our upper body. And there's a very characteristic pattern in, in this art. And one that again draws our attention and our intention to is internal flows. One more on each side. And then change in. Both hands coming in and with the next expansion, pushing up just a little bit above slightly in front of your head and down. And then the next time you lift, let your elbows drop so your hands push out sideways and back. Again, nice steady rhythm. With your hands slightly in front, yeah, only slightly, then <clears throat> we keep this sense of the Back of our body, supporting the front. And a slightly longer and broader feeling. And just feel the hair your back lengthening slightly. And then broadening. Almost like somebody is massaging your back with these alternating strokes lengthways. So next time, we don't want to lose that feeling in our back, but we're going to bring our hips more into the movement. As you push out, just turn in other direction. Notice how that changes the direction of your arms. And then back to the front. And on the other side. And back. And then <coughs> facing forwards and pushing. Now we have pushing in four directions. Highlighting the significance of that central part of your body between hips and waist, which becomes an increasingly important focus. It's that part of the body we want to feel is sinking towards the ground and tilting down. When we rotate, whether horizontally or vertically, 
in that central part of the body. We feel the effect all the way through the upper body. Turn, change the direction of the arms. If we were still rolling the weight forwards and backwards, it would be a rotation in the center, changing the alignment of our body. One more time. As you push out this time, put one foot forwards, the knees slightly bent. Turn your hands palm up and again roll forwards. Now imagine somebody sitting behind your chair, grabbing hold of your belt, pulling you back into the chair, and you how that draws your head and shoulders up. That what's pulling you back is gravity. And again, this feeling of your hips dropping back is one that we want to try and find when we get to the standing postures, as well, it's an important aspect of the posture. The gravity allowed to pull our hips back will actually help us to bring our head up. Right. And then <clears throat> again, a loose fist and almost the opposite movement going forwards. And grasping the tiger dips, drawing back. This time, push from the hips, and pushes your head slightly forwards and up, and that pulls your arms over. Once again, like with some of the earlier movements, there's this sense of expansion and then contraction in the chest. Change sides, extend the other foot, scoop it in the sink, and look at the skull. Again, aware of that sense of being pulled back into the chair. Trying to let gravity do the work of bringing us to the upright position so that we don't have to stiffen and to strain in our backs and our shoulders and our necks. One more time. And then grasping the tiger's ends. One more time. Once again, this tapping exercise in preparation for standing, tapping over your face. Over your head and neck. Down onto one shoulder. Your arm. <laughs> the side. And the upper part of the chest. The belly. And your legs. And then, just rest in your hand, but push your heels up and down. Let's get the blood going through your legs again. And then push up and circle your knees around. Just gently work in your head. And back the other way.
Okay. Now, if you want to stand, just stand. You can share with you if you feel that you may, may need support. I'm going to move mine out of the way so I don't get confident for it. But it can be quite useful to have support sometimes when you're trying to work out things. Things should be hip width apart, not too wide, but wide enough to give support to to your 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 hips. And just a little exercise going back to what I was saying about how our hips dropping back can can, can bring um, our shoulders up. I'm going to do this quite big, but you don't have to do it particularly big. But just tilt your pelvis forward. So you do that. You push your hips back, and then. We call it sitting back, just allowing your hips to drop down and maybe going back a bit further for this particular exercise. We wouldn't normally do this. Just feeling how that movement in the pelvis and hence the pull of gravity on your hips changes the position of your head and shoulders. So if we want to come to an upright position, once again, if we can allow gravity to work through the body, then Allow the hips to succumb, to yield to the pull of gravity. Then the upright position becomes less of a strain. So this time, when you get to that upright position, bring your hands around so you're prayed in the ball. Once again, sinking down and then pushing up. The version rooting down for the standing postures and pressing down from here. Turning your hands out, going into the wild goose and down. And when your hands become level with your hips, let them drop all the way down and part in the clouds. Your hands come down and your elbows bend and you're back to the first of these. So a little sequence of movements from one exercise to another. It's the same action in your hips, your legs, but some variations in the patterns of movement of energy in the upper part of your body. Don't, don't sort of, um, unless you've already got an idea of what you're looking for, don't, don't think it has to be a particular pattern that you're feeling. Initially, what we're trying to do is to recognize those patterns, that those patterns do actually exist. Do one more round. So an awareness of those internal patterns is something we can begin to bring our intention to, and we can be quite responsive to that. So this is where mind and body begin to merge in the production of these movements. We're going to change the stance. From this stance, keeping the width of your step, turn one foot out. Imagine parallel lines going across the room. Step forwards with your right foot, and then... Once again, begin to just transfer your weight, this time very much from foot to foot. See if you can remember that feeling of the weight dropping down into your foot and filling the leg up. And you, know, you may be able to apply it to the standing version of the exercise, but please be careful of your knees in particular. You're going to about 60%, just over half the weight in the front foot. Maybe as much as 70 in the back of this point. Again, moving from the ground, from the lower part of the body, 
again, hips hanging back. Slight feeling of lower back, hips, buttocks overhanging. And that helps us to maintain an upright stance while we're in movement. Moving into your back foot and just very gently raise your front toes so more of your weight now settles into your back foot. You can have the front foot turned out slightly. Go forwards, push your back knee forwards and let the heel come up. And again, more of your weight going into the supporting knee. Trying to maintain the alignment of your pelvis. Remember earlier when we were going sort of tilting the shoulders forwards and backwards, that came from the movement of the pelvis. And then stepping in and push out. Try not to think of balancing. What we look for is to align ourselves with the pull of gravity. And all that, that is involved in that. We allow our center of gravity, our center to drop. And the combination gives us a quality of stability. And when we've got stability, we don't have to try and balance. We only need to rebalance when we lose that stability. And then on the other side, transferring the weight. You may find a very strong habit of moving in your shoulders first. This is very common because it's, it's, it's how we just go, go, to, go through daily walking. It can be very efficient. This is slightly different. This is learning to take into account that connection to the ground as we move. And then raising toes and heel. Stepping in. Remember that image in the chair, the spine like a plant floating in water. If we can soften in the upper part of the body when we realize we don't need to strain simply to remain stable and upright then it encourages that internal flow and then depending on whether you've got space in front or behind see if you can take a few steps through plant in the front And then change direction. And shake out. Now. Have your right foot forward and do go into the standing version of fisherman casting. Again, there's this, this gentle curving movement. Your weight moves, your arms follow. Again, so you're moving through the water. That's an image that helps. So at the moment, our weight is moving forwards and backwards. We're facing forwards. We're not turning in the center, and our arms are following that pattern. The 
Now, this time, as you go into your back foot, turn to your left, same direction the back foot is pointing. So now you're drawing your arms across the body. And then drawing them across, expanding in your left side, pushing your arms up, round about shoulder height, going forwards and down. Turn a little bit, expand in your right. And we have this sort of sideways figure of eight movement. Some people like to think of it as the infinity sign. Your arms guided by the movement of your weight and turn in your center, and of course, by your intention, awareness of the pattern. Shake out. Try those movements with your left foot forwards. Starting with fisherman cast a net. And then turn in. There was a, an alternative version of the fisherman cast in the net. And this time into the river of eight, infinity sign. Now this time, turn your front foot out a little bit if you're going to go forwards. So we're going to take a step. So either forwards or backwards, depending on where you've got room. Bring the foot in. Step forwards. Just aware of your posture in particular. Hips and pelvis. And if you're comfortable with this, you might like to try just raising your knee a little bit. Don't worry if that's not appropriate. If you are raising the knee, just again, trying to make sure that you don't throw your pelvis out of line. I'm going to change direction before I bump into the camera. And then bring the feet power. Good. Go back to your chair. Going back to this basic posture, once again, becoming aware of the qualities that we associate with it, and that be qualities of mind or body, settling in, weight forwards if you're comfortable with that. Your hands drop down to your sides and then push your arms out again. This is embrace tiger return to the mountain. Bring your hands around as though you're going to hold a ball against your chest and then groin in, feeling what it is that draws you back to this stance and its qualities.
one more time. Letting your hands come to rest and again aware of your weight down in your feet and your hips. Support of your legs for your upper body, support of your back for the time to your body. And this sense of being supported from within. Helps in bringing your attention to your breathing or some other aspect of what's of movement within within your body, helping you to maintain a nice calm, quiet quality. Lovely. Open your eyes. As always, thank you very much, everybody. If you have any questions, do feel free to email me with them, and I'll do my best to answer them. But in the meantime, enjoy the rest of your day. Bye for now.